Hello and welcome to Ukraine Today. My name is Peter Burton with the Press Review. Over the past two weeks, Europe has faced two crises. One is in Greece, where decades of economic mismanagement could lead to a European financial crash. The other concerns Ukraine, where Russia's invasion may produce a European and maybe even an international war. Writing for the Washington Post, Ann Applebaum asks whether Germany's leaders are up to the task of dealing with the crises. In the case of Ukraine, the story is rather different. Since World War II, Germany has had no serious foreign policy record and no cadre of diplomats accustomed to solving foreign crises. Germany has no army to speak of either. Writing for the Sunday Times, Boyan Podchevsky writes that the Kremlin has launched a covert campaign to stir up national turmoil in Ukraine and destabilize its beleaguered government. As part of the plan, they say, the Kremlin's attention is shifting to the traditionally European leaning west of the country in a move to whip up opposition to President Petro Poroshenko in cities such as Kiev and Lviv. And finally, an op-ed from U.S. Senator Ron Paul entitled, Interventionism Kills, post to Ukraine one year later, appearing in the Eurasian Review. Ron Paul writes the following, what if John McCain had stayed home and worried about his constituents in Arizona instead of non-constituents 6,000 miles away? What if the other U.S. and EU politicians had done the same? What if Victoria Newland and U.S. Ambassador Joffrey Pyatt had focused on the actual diplomacy instead of regime change? The so-called Ukraine crisis was not about regime change. It began last year because Ukrainians risked their lives in the hopes of drawing close to the European Union. Unfortunately, U.S. and EU officials today continue to bungle increasingly desperate attempts to end Russia's invasion, which officially began one year ago today.